Oh, I love your fit. Thanks. Thank you. Who are you wearing? It's Vivian Westwood. Oh, why not Christian yeah. Dior? Oh, well, um... <laughs> Mr. Joe, what do you desire? To design the most beautiful women's clothing that ever existed. How did you prepare to play Christian Dior, who is a real person, obviously, but also like such a big name, but we don't all know the specifics about him. So was there like any specific trait or quality of his that you wanted to bring to the table? I think I wanted to bring his sensitivity, his anxiety, his shyness perhaps, and all of the flip sides of those emotions, which are very strongly in him as well. I keep thinking about what I have put all of you through these four years designing for the Nazis. It's quite a burden for you. He actually has a ferocious ambition, but it's yeah. very, very, very far back in him. I fear people will break in and steal what little we have. I'm sorry, I... I, I need something to barter for Catherine, so I was taking your fabric. He's also incredibly principled. He hated to have to do these things. It's either sink or swim. And when it comes to that kind of black and white, there is no question. Where did so much money come from? The Nazis have allowed Le Long to sell dresses to Spain and uh, South America. Oh, so there's some affair coming up. So there's more work. What are you making? Ball gowns. The only people throwing parties around are the Nazis, and you are making ball gowns. You are the fool. So did you, like, watch videos mm -hmm. or...? I watched video. I got a lot of the story stuff. I got a lot of impression stuff from people that worked in, in things. I'd heard from one or two contemporaries. But I wanted to stay away from the contemporary Dior and, and the company because I didn't want to get any ideas about it. I, didn't, I just yeah. didn't want to get crowded the space too crowded by um, a bunch of differing and disparate ideas. I just wanted to let the script sort of talk and try and take yeah. it through more as a love letter to him. My family is depending on that money. And was it, you no longer have access to that account. What, but it's my company, my money. Your partners fled the country at the start of the war. And they are no longer banking with us. The phones are no longer in the way timer's name. But they can't decide that without my permission. All I can tell you is that they have done it. You don't have access to that account. I'm sorry. But perhaps you should try the Nazis. How much did you know about Coco Chanel and were you surprised at all about the extent of her Nazi involvement when you signed on to the series? I knew a little bit about her, you know, the, let's say the dark sides of her, but I didn't know enough to really, you know, talk about it or, you know, uh, embody her. So it, yeah. it, it took a while to get into it. What was your process for finding your way in? I looked at documentaries. I looked at her little film that you can find very little, but still. And I spoke with people who knew her and I read books as I could compare different points of view because some of the books were very dark about her and, you know, putting her down as much as they could. And the other yeah. books were like enlightening her and making her, you know, this like untouchable icon. So yeah. the mix of both of it, I have to, you know, I, try, I was trying to find the common denominator between those readings and and, you know, I could find the core of her childhood very much that she tried to hit. If people knew that she was coming from a poor family as a woman, she wouldn't have done what she had done if she didn't hide it. So she, she learned to be a liar in a way in order to survive. Oh, I love your fit. Thanks. Thank you. Who are you wearing? It's Vivian Westwood. Oh, why not Christian yeah. Dior? Oh, well, um, <laughs> there's many opportunities to wear lots <laughs> of different designers, mostly because what I really enjoyed doing was looking at designers who are not Christian Dior, but are still inspired by the new look. Um, oh yeah, so cool. Because really what he created has like, time and time again inspired designers throughout history from like, yeah, all throughout time. And so I had a real pleasure looking at all kinds of designers from all around the world who still have like mimicked this very distinctive silhouette. Yeah, that's so cool. 
How much about this story did you know before taking on this role? Did you know about Christian Dior the person? Yeah, I mean, I knew about Christian Dior the person and Coco Chanel the person. I had no idea about Catherine. I was speaking to some of my friends who did fashion history and they knew a lot about Christian and Lucien Lelong and like the history there and, and spoke to me about that. But really, I learned everything about this story from working on this show. And I think Catherine is someone that we do not think about when we right. think about Christian Dior and we think about fashion, but she was such a huge inspiration to him and his life and in his work. It feels like such a good thing to be able to be part of like bringing her story back to the consciousness of uh, yeah. people, yeah. You are my responsibility, Catherine. And why is that exactly? Why? Because you promised mother you would take care of me? As my final question, I do have to service my Swifties. So how closely did you guys work with Jack Antonoff on the soundtrack? And did he make the introduction credit song? Because I love the intro. Oh, it's that's so right. <laughs> so we worked very, we've worked with Jack now for two years, very, very closely. And uh, Jack, uh, in conversation about the show, the idea was to uh, use period songs for each episode, one song per episode, and have deconstruct the song and use it as the score, and have mm -hmm. the song build over the course of the episode and then conclude with uh, a modern cover, so Jack produced the modern covers and brought in people that he had, artists, great artists like Florence from Florence and the Machine and Lana Del Rey, uh, Nick Cave, the 1975, Jack does one with his band Bleachers, Perfume Genius does an amazing song, Barty Strange. So Jack, we worked very closely with him in doing that and uh, he did not write the opening credit song. Ah, that was okay. inspired, uh, it's our composer, uh, James Levine. Um, who I had worked with on Bloodline and Damages, but it's all, we're all being inspired by one another for, for that work. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm very happy that you like that song, and it's a great credit to Jimmy that you have that response. Yeah, I was ready to hunker down every time. <laughs> That's great. And please tell the Swifties. Yes. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs>